Which toothpaste should I use? Sodium fluoride, stannous fluoride, monofluorophosphate? Let's talk about the different types of fluoride. Hi, my name is Whitney and I'm a dental hygienist. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. Today, let's talk about fluoride toothpaste. And before we get started, a quick shout out to the Teeth Talk Patreon and the YouTube members who support this channel. I love that you are part of my mission on spreading evidence-based dental health information. So let's jump in. First up, toothpaste that has the main ingredient of sodium fluoride. So both sodium fluoride and stannous fluoride, which we'll talk about next, are probably the two most common types of fluoride to have in toothpaste, but sodium fluoride in particular is great at preventing cavities in both adults and children, and it also comes in prescription strengths for patients who are at a high risk for tooth decay or have severe gum recession and sensitivity. So if you get a prescription strength toothpaste from your dentist, it's probably made with sodium fluoride. You'll also find sodium fluoride in most cavity prevention mouthwashes because of how well it works as a liquid solution. Next up, stannous fluoride. Stannous fluoride, like we said, is another extremely common type of fluoride found in toothpaste. And unlike sodium fluoride, stannous fluoride has extra antimicrobial properties, which do more than just combat tooth decay. Stannous fluoride can also help manage, prevent, and treat gingivitis because of how effective it is on plaque biofilm levels. It actually interferes with the plaque on a molecular level, which is why some experts believe it is the best fluoride toothpaste to use. In addition, it's also considered more resilient than sodium fluoride when it comes to standing up against acid levels of cavity-causing bacteria, effectively helping stabilize the pH level inside of your mouth, and lowering your risk of cavities even more. Now, one more thing about stannous fluoride. A while back, there was one negative to it, because nothing could be so good, right? It was known to stain teeth in some people's mouths. However, the dental staining instances were all pre-2006, and in all of those instances, the stain was always easily polished off at dental cleaning. Having said that, more recent FDA approved stannous fluoride formulas are reported to be better when it comes to avoiding tooth stains. So I wouldn't worry about it, but if you are extra cautious about teeth stain or you've noticed that your teeth stain quickly, maybe you'll opt for sodium fluoride just in case. But the good does outweigh the bad with stannous fluoride because on top of it having the gingival benefits and the anti-cavity properties, if you are someone with sensitive teeth, stannous fluoride is great to use because of how effectively it combats tooth hypersensitivity. It actually helps desensitize the tiny nerve endings across tooth surfaces and helps seal up the tiny tubules, the pores that house them. But if you're someone with sensitive teeth and you're not into trying stannous fluoride due to the history of some people reporting tooth staining, another toothpaste ingredient that can help with tooth sensitivity is potassium nitrate, which if you want to learn more about that, I'll link my sensitivity video in the description box below. And lastly, monofluorophosphate. Monofluorophosphate uses different molecular compounds that are activated by specific enzymes in your saliva. You'll often find this one in toothpaste that are considered holistic or natural. And since monofluorophosphate reacts differently, it is compatible with some ingredients that other fluorides are not. Hence why it's often used in the natural toothpastes where there are different ingredients involved. However, if you suffer from dry mouth, you might not have enough saliva enzymes for this type of toothpaste to work. So some experts say this type of fluoride isn't supposed to be used for long-term purposes purposes unless directed by your dentist. However, my professional opinion is to use whichever fluoride toothpaste that you personally like that feels good in your mouth because you're more likely to brush your teeth for the full two minutes each time when you're using a toothpaste that you like, whether it's the consistency or the taste or the brand, as long as it contains fluoride and it's approved by the American Dental Association with the ADA seal of acceptance on it because then you know it's been tested for safety and efficacy. But for the purpose of this video, since we're talking about the three different fluorides in toothpaste, over Overall, it seems as if stannous fluoride has the most benefits. So at least as of now, I would say it's possibly the most beneficial fluoride toothpaste to use. However, honestly, before I made this video, I learned in dental hygiene school that both sodium fluoride and stannous fluoride are equally reputable and equally recommended for cavity prevention. So I've personally never told any of my patients to use one over the other. I think they're both great. Again, I'm all about using what you like because if you like it, you'll use it. No matter 
which fluoride toothpaste do you use? Just like how calcium builds strong bones, fluoride is what helps build strong teeth. And it does this by reversing the demineralization process before a physical cavity forms in your tooth enamel. Fluoride is a naturally occurring mineral that aids in the prevention of tooth decay, aka cavities. Fluoride is not a toxin. Lots of people are out there spreading misinformation on social media. Those who claim it's a toxin often forget that everything and anything can be toxic at a certain dose. You can have too much oxygen in the air and you won't be able to breathe, right? Same goes for water, all fluoride aside. Water itself can be toxic if you drink too much of it. Your kidneys can only flush out so much every hour if you're drinking gallons and gallons, right? So anyway, back to the toothpaste. If you want me to make a video more about the fluoride controversy, let me know in the description. I'd be happy to if you think you want it. And until then, I will link my natural toothpaste video if you want to learn more about the non-fluoride options such as nano hydroxyapatate. And I hope this video helped you. Please like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications if it did. Thank you again to the YouTube members here and the Patreon members supporting this channel and supporting dental health awareness. If you want to join the fight in making sure evidence-based dental health information is being shared online, become part of our Teeth Talk community. The links to join are in the description box below. And until then, I'll see you on Instagram at Teeth Talk Girl. Peace, love, and teeth.